Hey guys, welcome to Science with Mr. Dong. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about matter and particles. So we know that all things are made of matter. I'm made of matter, this phone is made of matter, and you, the viewers, students, you're made of matter. What is matter? Matter is anything that takes up space and has volume. And there's a theory that explains what matter is. It's called the particle theory of matter. And there are two things that we need to try and understand, uh, we need to consider when trying to understand this theory. And the first thing is that all matter is made up of tiny little particles. Okay? So if you zoom in on something, let's say if you zoom in on my eye, okay, you'll see there are little cells. What are these cells made of? They're made of little particles. Okay? And there's a whole bunch of these particles put together will make one of these cells. Um, and the second thing is that all of these particles are constantly moving and depending on the state of matter that they're in and the energy that they have, these little particles will move at different speeds um, and at different rates. Okay? And there are three states of matter, solids, liquids and gases. There's a fourth one, plasma, which we won't be going into. But in this lesson, there are going to be two experiments that I'll be doing and demonstrating to show you that, um, to demonstrate this particle theory of matter. Okay, so this demonstration, we're going to be, I'll, I'll be demonstrating the behavior of particles in a solid and what happens to these particles when it gets heated up. And so here I have a metal stick. At the end of the metal stick, there's a ring. And attached to it, we have this. It's a metal ball. Now they're both solids, okay? And to prove to you that the solids, no, I'm not going to smash my head with it. I'm just going to knock it on the table and you hear it. Very solid. Also very solid. Okay. And so in solids, the particles are packed very tightly next to each other. Okay. In a very regular arrangement, um, leaving very little space in between each particle. Um, and these part and the particle theory of matter states that these particles are always vibrating and always constantly moving. And these particles are moving, but in a solid state, they're not moving very much. And I'm just going to grab my tongs. And as they're in a solid state, this ball moves through the ring pretty easily as it's designed to. Now what am I what I'm going to do is heat up this ball. And as I heat up the ball, the particles start to vibrate a lot more. Um, and because the particles are so tightly packed next to each other, there's going to be a very high chance of these particles colliding with other particles. And as these particles collide with each other, they're going to push each other away, um, essentially forcing the shape of the metal or the metal board to expand. Now we can't see this expansion if we keep looking at it because it's a very minute, very small expansion. But even though this ex expansion is very small, it's enough to make the ball too big to go through the hole. How cool is that? Okay, so the heat has made these particles collide with each other, pushing them further away from each other, forcing the metal to expand. And to, show, and to prove to you that this is no magic trick, I'm just going to cool down this ball again in some water. Okay. And as I cool it down, the particles stop moving as frequently, and they stop colliding with each other as frequently, and it, the, the shape of the metal ball starts to contract. It starts to take its original form again, its original shape. And as I cool it down, these particles, again, the arrangement of the particles move back to its original arrangement. So they're closely um, packed next to each other again. And what you're going to see is that I'll be able to move the ball through the ring very easily. Okay, how cool is that? Okay, and so this next demonstration, we're going to be talking about particles in gases. 
Um, and more explicitly, I'm going to be proving that gases do exist. And if we talk about the particles in gases, we know that they're not confined to a regular shape. And the particles in gases are very tiny, which is why we can't see it. But it doesn't mean it's not there. So I've got a pipe here, and I'm just going to turn on the gas jet. The gas jet. And you can hear it, but you can't see anything. That doesn't mean it's not there. And just another cool thing with gases, um, they're very small and they're very light. So as soon as I turn on this gas tap, okay, these gas particles are going to float into the air because they're lighter than the air particles that we breathe in. So what I've got here is a large plastic beaker of water and I've put in some um, liquid, some uh, washing liquid, dishwashing detergent. Okay. And I'm going to direct the gas into the water. Okay. And what the dishwashing detergent does is it traps the particles in these bubbles that are forming so that the particles don't float up in the air. And you can't see it because, again, the particles are very tiny, but you can see the bubbles. So these bubbles are actually trapping the gases that are in, um, that are coming out of this gas jet. And what I'm going to do, okay, and to prove to you that there is actually gas in these bubbles, I'm just going to light it on fire. Okay. And some of you may have already seen this, but for those who haven't, just tune in because this is going to be very cool. Three, two, one. And that's gases. So thanks for tuning in guys. That's Science with Mr. Duong. I hope you learned something or it was good revision for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe guys and see you next time.